The Lord be with you. Welcome to this fifth full week of Lent in the year of our Lord 2021. Uh, we have been journeying through this desert road of Lent, um, trying to come to terms with the fact that um, our experience of God, um, our spiritual experience in this earthly plane, is kind of like um, just blindly reaching out for him, uh, never fully sure if he's there. Uh, and while that might be frustrating on our part, what we learn from some of the New Testament authors is that that has been uh, the very normative process for God since the beginning of the nations, that he seems to have intended that uh, he would be near to us and he desires us to reach out for him, seeking him, uh, that we might find him. So the question is, why? Uh, what is that process all about? And what we see as we go back and sort of look at the beginning of humanity's relationship with God, um, it seems that he has put a lot of emphasis on this issue of freedom. Um, God deeply desires, it seems, for us to freely be in a relationship with him, to freely choose him, to freely desire him, to freely love him. Uh, and God has put all of those elements in there for that to happen. Now, um, temptation occurs throughout life. A temptation in and of itself isn't bad. It can actually strengthen our relationship. Uh, but we have to continue to choose the right things. We have to continue to desire the right things. And unfortunately, from the beginning in our relationship with God, uh, humanity has given in to temptation and has valued things other than God more than we valued God. And that has warped us. Um, our very um, original selves are sort of um, twisted and bent and out of shape. And therefore, we have been living enslaved to our sins and our lusts uh, for so long that even when Jesus comes and sets us free from the power of sin and death, we continue to live according to the patterns of this sinful world because that's all we know. We are just steeped in it. We are completely misaligned and we completely uh, continue to attach ourselves uh, we continue to be addicted to all of the wrong things. Now, from time to time, as we continue to reach out for God, uh, sometimes we find him. God never gives all of himself to us. Uh, but we get these glimpses. We have these mountaintop experiences. We have these spiritual awakenings with you, if you will. And uh, part of what happens in that is we see God and he's very different than we expected um, because everything that we've known about God has been an attachment. It's been an attachment to a lesser thing. Uh, and all of a sudden, when we experience God, uh, for even just a moment, he is bigger and wider and deeper and um, so much more unable for us to understand. Uh, he's uncontainable. And that shocks us. Um, we can even, through this process of self-discovery, uh, we can get glimpses of ourselves, who we are in relation to God. And what we learn is um, we have built up uh, false selves. We have attached our identity to too many things um, that aren't truly us, uh, jobs, hobbies, um, uh, things that we like, things that we don't like, people that we know, roles that we play. And all of a sudden, when it's just us and God, um, I'm not sure that we fully know who we are. So all of these things create this unsettled feeling in us. And again, if you're doing Lent, Intently and intensely, um, you can get these agitated feelings. Uh, the goal, however, is to 
to keep pressing forward. We can either become frightened by these things and choose to avoid them, or we can keep misattaching our understanding of life and ourselves and our God um, with things that are lesser than all of those true, honest things at their core. Um, or we can try and grow in our relationship. And the question in this video is, how do we do that? How do we move forward once we understand um, we have a false understanding of ourself and uh, a false understanding of our God? And uh, the term I'm going to present to you is that uh, this is about us choosing to come home. Uh, it sounds like a simple idea, and um, to explain it, uh, I want to use a parable that Jesus taught. Um, it's a very common parable. You've heard this before. I'm not going to read all of it because um, I think it's just the first half of it that uh, I want to use to talk about our experience. It becomes something else in the second half. So, this reading is going to come from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, uh, beginning in verse 11 and carrying through through verse 24. It says, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and he set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out. And go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. the very words of our eternal God. Now, the second half of the parable uh, gets into the second son's response, and that certainly seems to be the point of the parable. By the end of it, Jesus uh, is making a point, it seems, in that context to the Pharisees and to the religious leaders of his day that um, they were becoming jealous of other people, uh, so-called sinners being let into the kingdom, uh, being let into um, close proximity to Jesus. Uh, and while that is true and that is accurate, uh, what I think we need to identify, at least as far as our spiritual journey is concerned, is with the first half of that. Um, notice that there is a son who has his heart attached to all the wrong things. He wants his money. He wants it now. He goes and he spends that money on wild 
living. Uh, again, disordered loves. And that leads him to a place that he doesn't desire to be. He goes through severe distress. But one day he comes to his senses. And he realizes that everything around him is worthless. It hasn't brought him happiness. It's not going to move him forward in this life. He remembers his father's house and that even a servant in that house is better off than he is. And while he has sinned and while he fully acknowledges uh, that he doesn't deserve to be called a son anymore, he hasn't acted like a son, he decides to go home. Beloved, I think this speaks to us about our spiritual journey. Um, again, we are attached to the wrong things. Uh, we put our hope and our faith in the wrong things. We live for the wrong things. Uh, but we have these moments where uh, we can come to our senses. We can be spiritually awakened. And when we do, um, we have to choose to go home. Now that sounds simple. But keep in mind, it's a long journey that he's in a far country at this point. Keep in mind, the journey is still going to be difficult. He's still going to have needs. He's still going to have wants. He's still going to have temptations that maybe are going to call him back to uh, the place that he's leaving. Uh, and that's true for us as well. Um, it isn't easy to say we need to churn our hearts towards home. And again, there's lots of different things you can call this. Some people might call it spiritual formation. It's growing in our faith. Some people might call it our sanctification. Whatever you choose, it's that posture where we shift from going down the wrong road and in repentance and in awakening, uh, we choose to go back, choose to go back to where God is, choose to Come to God. Come to the Father. And while we're doing that, um, we can get this idea that we're actually giving everything up. And that's hard. That's actually part of how sin is going to try and tempt us back. Uh, we've already talked about how sin can deceive us into thinking uh, we can't overcome something. We can't truly give something up because um, we're too dependent upon it. We don't have the strength in and of ourselves. Uh, one of the other things that sin deceives us with is you are going to be constantly unhappy because you're never going to have those things that used to make you happy. So whatever it is uh, that we're fasting from uh, during this season of Lent, uh, those things that are revealing to us, we're too addicted to them. We depend upon them too much. Yes, maybe it's just a drink or a food. Maybe it's just a certain life rhythm or pattern. Maybe it's uh, the clothes that we wear or the friends we hang out with or the status that we're used to. Um, all of those things are not truly who we are and aren't the things that are going to bring us happiness. So we can go through this temptation because of the deception of the slave master sin that we're gonna lose all these things and we're never gonna be happy again. But that's not true. Uh, in fact, it isn't that we lose things as much as it is things take their proper place all of a sudden. Jesus said it this way to his disciples, uh, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. You see, it's only in Jesus, when we're following Jesus, when we're loving God in his kingdom and putting God in his kingdom first, that all of a sudden, everything else falls into place. Uh, we get reoriented to God. Our true desire is to him. Our true love is for him. And it isn't that we don't love other things or that we can't appreciate other things. They just don't get the top spot. Another reason I think homecoming might be a good way to think about this um, is because of what Jesus says in John's gospel as he's speaking uh, his words of farewell to his disciples. He says in John chapter 14, verse 23, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them 
and we will come to them and make our home with them. You see, it isn't that you need to wait to be at home with God um, in the eschaton. It isn't that you need to wait until um, the new heavens and the new earth. It isn't that you need to wait until after death. Uh, Jesus seems to be speaking to his disciples right now in the moment. If they are following him, if they are choosing him, if they are obeying him, then Jesus and the Father will come to us and will make their home with us, in us. That's what we need. Again, this is going to get messed up. Uh, it's easy to say, we understand it, it's easy to say, um, just turn and start walking towards home, but um, there's lots of things in that home-making process and in that journey towards home that we're going to misattach our loves to, even good things. So one of the ways that we come to know Jesus, that we obey Jesus, is through the reading of his word. And yet, um, Bible reading can become an attachment. Uh, we can get too used to the process of reading. We can get too puffed up on our Bible understanding or our Bible knowledge. And uh, we can become dependent upon the discipline of Bible reading, and miss the point that it's supposed to lead us to God in our love for God. We can settle for Bible reading and never actually get to God. Isn't that crazy? Same thing with prayer. Same thing with all spiritual disciplines. We can get addicted to the rhythm and the joy and the comfort and the pattern that we get out of our spiritual disciplines and never actually get to loving God or being with God or growing closer to God. Now, we can get things that we're attached to that are better than the things that we were attached to before, but there's still attachments and there's still misattachments. It doesn't help us realign our desire towards the one true thing, God himself being with God. So we're going to need something else, uh, and we're going to have to hold it very loosely. We're going to have to be very forgiving and humble in our walk on this journey. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. But for now, keep working on making space in your heart and in your life so that God can continue to make his home in you. And in these days of Lent and these ongoing days of wilderness, may the peace of God be with you. Amen.